be found. Call upon him while he is near. He is an awesome God and he is worthy of worship, worthy of glory, and worthy of our praise. Let us worship God as we bow our heads in prayer. Gracious and eternal God our Father, we come into your presence with thanksgiving, but we also come bowed by the weight of the cares of this world. We come burdened with grief. We come anguished over the violence that is rampant within our society. Help us, O oh God, to realize that Violence is never the solution to any problem. That in fact, violence itself is part of the problem. We confess our sins and our transgressions. We have sinned against thee and we have sinned against each other. Forgive us individually and collectively of our sins. For you have declared in scripture that if your people 
who are called by your name would humble themselves and pray and seek your face and turn from their wicked ways you would hear from heaven you would forgive us of our transgressions and you would heal our land we come asking that you would heal our land from division from strife from hatred and from violence help us to be advocates of peace and help us to be about the business of building a beloved community among all men let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven these things we ask in the name of jesus christ our lord amen Hear the reading of the scripture passage taken from Matthew's Gospel, chapter 13, beginning at verse 24. Another parable he put forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seeds in his field. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. But when the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit, then appeared the tares also. So the servants of the household came and said unto him, Sir, didst not thou sow good seed in the field? From whence thence? hath it tares. And he said unto them, An enemy has done this. He said unto them, An enemy has done this. From that parable told by the Savior, or to share some thoughts with you from this subject, an enemy has done this. An enemy has done this. Recent events underscore the importance of the lesson Jesus taught his disciples in the parable of the wheat and the tares. This parable was given by Christ as he taught from a fishing boat. The parable focuses on what happens when unexpectedly we find ourselves facing unimaginable tragedy. The parable identifies the cause of the problem. It stresses the need for vigilance and it reaffirms the ultimate sovereignty of God. The master's parable speaks of a farmer called in the parable of sower who planted good seeds in his field. The soil was good and the field was well prepared. A good crop was in the making but suddenly something awful happened. During the night the field was invaded and the crop was sabotaged. The astonished workers reported the tragedy to the sower. His response was immediate and informative. The sower replied, An enemy has done this. An enemy has done this. Those same words should echo across our nation. It is a good explanation for the rampant violence that is raging around us. An enemy has done this. An enemy of humanity, an enemy of morality, an enemy of decency. 
an enemy has done this. It is estimated that roughly 38,000 people die by gun violence each year in our country. Shooters have invaded shopping malls, churches, nightclubs, and schools. People have been killed while working and others while worshiping. No community has been spared and no place is beyond the reach of this senseless violence. And all of us have been affected. The message of the parable is clear. An evil enemy is at work in our midst. And he has been at work since the beginning of human history. He is the tempter, the great deceiver, the great destroyer. Scripture calls him Satan. Satan is not only the enemy of God, he is the enemy of humankind. And he uses other people to carry out his mission a mission that he is relentless in fulfilling. Scripture says that Satan is like a roaring lion, constantly seeking someone to devour. And this enemy uses one primary tactic to achieve his end. He deceives. He lies. In fact, he is the father of lies. He twists and distorts what is true. There is power in his lies in that he mixes it with just a little few grains of truth. To quote Pope Francis, the evil in the world comes not from God, but from our enemy, Satan. He is cunning. He sows evil amidst the good. And in the words of the elders of another generation, the devil is busy. He's busy disrupting the work of the church. He's busy corrupting the heart of humanity. He is busy twisting the truth. He is busy terrorizing the innocent and the faithful. He is busy spreading fear and disrupting lies. While we focused on international terrorism, domestic terrorists have been breeding in our own borders. While we were looking for enemies without, enemies of decency and enemies of civility have been breeding in our own backyards. They've sown the seeds of discontent. They planted seeds of hate that have grown into vines of violence. The climate of violence raging around us has robbed our children of their innocence and left us bewildered, baffled, insecure, and afraid. The parable not only identifies the enemy, but it also details his methods. The enemy works in the dark. In the text, it's under the cover of darkness that this enemy of the sower sowed tares among the wheat. And under the cover of the darkness that is enveloping our land, evil men and women are sowing seeds of violence. Yes, the tares referred to in Matthew 13 is a type of ryegrass that looks a lot like wheat, but they are poisonous. In the darkness of indifference, the enemy sowed seeds of hate. In the darkness of apathy, our enemies have sowed seeds of nihilism. In the darkness of despair, he has sowed seeds of distrust. That is the nature of the evil enemy we are facing. That is part of the sinful nature of humankind. 
Scripture declares that men love darkness rather than light because their deeds are evil. We cannot deny that there is a moral darkness spreading throughout our land. We must admit that amoral forces are busy working evil in this darkness. But there's also a greater truth. Darkness cannot defeat light. When the morning comes, the light will shine. When the morning comes, the deeds done in the dark will be exposed in the light. And we know that while weeping may endure for that night, joy will come in the morning. Nevertheless, we must do more than just curse the darkness. We must do more than just curse the darkness. We must light candles in the dark. The text therefore emphasizes the need for all of us who believe in justice, all of us who believe in love, all of us who believe in decency must be vigilant. The damage in the text was not only done in the darkness, but it was also done while those in charge slept. That is the challenge to our leaders, our political and our spiritual leaders to be vigilant and proactive in this night of darkness. As followers of Christ, we've been charged to be both watchful and prayerful. Watch is the word used for being aware like a sentry at night. We are to be on guard for anything that is out of order and we must be on the lookout for the enemy, and we must be ready to act when he appears. That command has been reinforced down through the ages. It is a fact that evil triumphs when good men and women hold their peace. The same is especially true for those of us who are of the household of faith. The words of an old hymn reminds us that we cannot afford to take things for granted. We cannot afford to shut our eyes to the painful things happening around us. The hymn calls for vigilance with these words. My soul be on thy guard, ten thousand foes arise, the host of sin are pressing hard to draw thee from the skies. Ne'er think the victory won, nor once at ease sit down, but odious work will be done if thou would get the crown. It ends by saying, oh, watch and fight and pray. The battle ne'er give o'er, renew it boldly every day and help divine employ. If we fail to be watchful, if we fail to remain alert, if we fail to be proactive, terrible things will continue to happen. The parable moves from disaster to dilemma. When the damage was done, the workers did not know exactly what they should do. And that's how many of us feel when we look around and see the extent of anger, hatred, and violence uh, all around us. In the text, the des in desperation, these workers turned to the sore like you and I must turn to God. They asked him a question, do you want us to go and gather up the tares? But he said, no. Least while you gather up the tares, you also root up the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest. 
And at the time of the harvest, I will say to the reapers, first gather together the tares and bind them into bundles and burn them and then gather the wheat into my barns. When we find ourselves facing the dilemma of disaster, we must realize that God is the answer. We must turn to him. Our knowledge is limited, but God's knowledge is complete. We are fooled by appearances, but God's plans revolve around an eternal purpose. The tares may look like wheat, but tares can never become wheat. The tares may look like wheat, but tares can never become wheat. Time is the friend of wheat, but time is the foe of tares. God is sovereign. The field belongs to him. He is the keeper of time, and we belong to him. Both the wheat and the tares are subject to his will. For the earth is the Lord's. And the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. And in his time he will send reapers into the field to deal with the threat. We can assess the damage that has been done in the field, but the job of separating wheat from tear is too complicated for us. When we separate, we weed out the wrong people. We profile, keeping those who have money, keeping those who have power. We are quick to reject those who are humble, those who are poor, and those who do we just don't like. And we get impatient with the slow growth of some and give up on them too soon because they show too little promise. But God does not judge by outward appearances. He judges because he knows the heart. And he will have the final word. He will separate the wheat from the tare, the sheep from the goat. But according to Matthew 25, his decision will not be based on perception. It will be based on production. That is the challenge we face. We must be productive or we will be tossed aside by the Creator. It is not enough to offer empty words of anguish. We must produce works and the fruits of righteousness. Where there's hatred, we must plant seeds of love. We must work up for reconciliation, we must put into practice the ethics of the Christ we proclaim. And we must point a lost world to the great Redeemer. He can handle the enemy that haunts us. He can change minds. And he can change hearts. And he is the answer for the world today. Christ gave us a solution that will end the night of violence that envelops us. For he commanded us to love one another as I have loved you. Love one another as I have loved you. He loved us enough to die for us on the cross of Calvary. He purchased our salvation with his precious blood. He took the staying away from the great enemy death. And he robbed the grave of his victory. He is still the answer to the violence produced by hate and nurtured by hopelessness. For if you have some questions in the corner of your mind, traces of discouragement and peace you cannot find, 
reflections of the past seem to face you every day. There is one thing I do know. Jesus is the way. He is the way to transform this wilderness of violence into an oasis of love. If we love one another like he loved us. If we follow him, we will be able to break down the barriers that separate us from each other and purge ourselves of the hatred and envy that allows us to look down upon others. He cares for us and he cares enough for all of us so that we must understand that life matters and every life is important. If we follow him, if we embrace him, he will handle that evil that is surrounding us. The Lord bless you. And the Lord keep you in the days that are ahead. May his abiding presence shield you from all your foes and your fears. And may his Holy Spirit empower each one of us to become agents of change, agents of hope, and ambassadors of love. Amen and amen. Be watchful. Be prayerful. Be proactive. Peace, joy, and love.